Hi everyone, I'm Luke Hector from The Broken Meeple. This is a show where I rave and rant about board games, but usually more the latter part. This is a new filler from Ludonaut Games. This is the only thing they brought out at Essen, and I would give you props if you were to glance by this and not even take another look at it, because it's not exactly a looker from the cover, and it certainly doesn't exactly scream out much from the word Arctic. It's like, okay, it's a filler game with a little polar bear in it. Well, now what? Well, there's a little more to this than meets the eye. It's a fill of the game. It's got some quirky mechanics to it. 10 minutes a player, so it's short. Two to four players, you're talking 20, 30 minutes. So it is small package, cheap, and a box. And I believe it's actually releasing in the UK, if not this week, but very soon. I believe it is getting a UK release soon. So you'll be able to get a copy of this if you think it's for you. So what exactly is this game? Well, the idea is, is that you are building sequences of cards. And the cards basically come in six different animal types. So you've got Arctic Fox, Orca, Caribou. Uh, I keep calling it Pelican for some reason. It's actually a Puffin. I don't know why Pelican gets stuck in my head. Um, and also uh, Walrus. And I'm sure there's one other I forgot. Oh yes, the lovely Polar Bear, as we said. So the idea is, is that the deck is constructed, some are removed at random, but the whole quirk of this game is basically, if I put the, uh, there we go, can we put that there? There we go. So the idea is, is that you're building sequences, and by sequences I mean that you need the uh, same number of animals in a row. So, you know, one to six arctic foxes in a row, one to six, you know, walruses in a row, that kind of thing. The bigger the sequence, the more points you get, but the more sequences you make of different animal types, the more points you get as well. The idea is, is that on the first turn it's slightly different, but on subsequent turns you will basically have some cards in front of you on a face-up pile. It will have an animal face on it, and it tells you how many cards you must place on your turn. You'll have a hand size that's limited to seven, and it's like, okay, I can put two cards down in this case. So I've got to find two cards in my hand that I'll put down. Well, it makes sense to put another Arctic Fox down, continue the sequence, but now I've got to choose something else. All right, fine, we'll choose the, the Walrus here. So now I've only got to put down one card on my next turn, but what the, uh, the rest of the card does is that it dictates the rest of your round. So the first thing that you have is you have some cards laid out in a sequence of points. There's one in here for 15 points, I can't be bothered to find it. But essentially these have tokens on at the start of the game. Everybody has a secret animal token when the game starts. And essentially what will happen is on your animal card, it will have pictures of two animals on it, the main one and the companion one. And based on certain rules, you have to move them on this little track of cards. And this track of cards is worth points at the end of the game for the totem that you've got. But here's the other little quirk here. You have player powers for all the six animal types, A and B side, so they're sort of variations of each other. These are available to everybody at the start of the game, and whichever card you have visible on top when you place your cards down is the power you now take and put in front of you. And they've all got different little powers that basically let you manipulate the tokens and the cards in various cool ways. This is similar to a game called Rattus that came out ages ago. A very dry Euro game. It's okay, it's not too bad, but it is very dry. But that one had character powers that you could nick on certain people's turns and you held on to it for as long as you could before somebody nicked it off you. Well, same here. If nobody plays the Walrus on top of their deck for a while, I get to keep the Walrus power. And if I happen to play the, um, you know, some cards on my next turn and I end up with an Orca Whale on my thing, well then, I'll take the Orca power. Sweet, I don't lose the Walrus. I've still got it, so I could harvest a bunch of these powers depending on what the other players are doing. And then lastly, the card also tells you how many cards you draw from a selection like a face-up display. So let's just assume I'm doing it from the deck in this case. This one tells me to draw three cards. So essentially each turn that you have is based on the card that you have face-up. So to start with, I have to now place three cards, okay? Uh, one, two, three. I now get caribou power. I can use the powers how I see fit. I then have to move the tokens based on here, so Caribou can go up one, Arctic Fox can go down, and then I have to draw five cards. Ah, here's the other problem. Because if you draw more than seven cards, if you've got more than seven cards at the end of your turn, you have to discard the excess into a penalty pile, they're worth minus one point. And if you ever have to place cards and you don't have enough in your hand, they come from the deck into your penalty pile. So you've got to make certain that you're efficient with how many you place and how much you draw. That's essentially the crux of the game. At the end of the game, you score points based on a, you know, on a 1, 3, 6, 10, 15 scale for how long the sequence is for each animal and how many different sequences you'll have, where your token is on here, minus your penalty points. Nice and straightforward. This, at first, I thought, okay, 
quirky little game. It's quirky. It's a different mechanic. The Rattus uh, powers thing is really cool. You know, you've got different powers for the variety aspect. But I was thinking, how much game are you going to get for something that's basically just telling you to place cards down and draw cards back up? I mean, that doesn't seem like there's a huge amount of decision space. Well, there is, and honestly, this game is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. This one is actually a really good, fun, quirky game. When I showed it to some friends at the club the other night, you know, we, we played it once, and then they liked it so much, we wanted to play it two, three times afterwards. Like, we just kept playing it and playing it and playing it, and I've played it since. This game is just a really good little quirky filler, because... You're thinking first, right, I need to create sequences. Well, I've got cards in my hand. Do I extend the sequence I've got and leave it at that? Well, if you do, you don't get to draw any new powers because if I end, if I start with Caribou and end up with Caribou, I still have that power. That's not, uh, that's not going to change anything. But then I've also got to think, well, hang on a minute. How many cards do I want to place down next turn? Do I want to place down a max of five or do I only want to place down one? All the cards are basically skewed in a fashion. So let's say if you want to place down five cards, you'll only get to draw one. Whereas if you only get to place down one card, you get to draw five. And it basically sort of balances with two, four, and three, three. So you're looking at not only what powers you can grab, but you're looking at which tokens you've got to move. Your one is hidden, so you're not trying to make it so obvious that my, you know, my polar bear is my totem. Therefore, please, can we have it on the 15-point card, please? You know, you want to kind of bluff it for as long as you can. It may sound like not a big choice with the whole, like, oh, do I play five cards or one card on the next turn but there's more to it than you think because if you only place one card you're not creating a big sequence you can dictate exactly what you draw a uh, place down and you know you're not going to run out of cards you've got a, hopefully a lot for the next round but one card's not a lot you know placing down five cards is great you could build up a massive sequence of arctic foxes if you've got five foxes in your hand but then you only draw one card so suddenly your hand size on the next turn isn't very large so do i do a three and a three well again is that gonna be right what tokens are you gonna move on here you know well i've got several walrus cards here but they all move the walrus but then i have to move the whale i have to move the puffin bird and it's like well which one am i i'm the puffin bird so okay i want to end up on that one but then that makes me draw four and only play two is that the numbers i want there's just enough little decision space with the cards that you end up with combined with these rattus style player powers that are all pretty useful in their own respect i mean you know i get a time when somebody's going oh, there's nothing in those six face up display cards that i like you know that's kind of annoying well it's like if only you had my orca power and then you could draw from the deck so you got more choices there's you know, there's something to shore up a weakness or a problem that you're having. It's just a case of, are you willing to go out and get it? Just very cool, quirky little mechanics with a decent amount of decision space. That's what you want from a cool filler. I love the fact that it feels like a different filler. You know, I've played some fillers lately and they've been good fun. This one is different. I can't think of any game off the top of my head that used this, this kind of mechanic of the visible card dictates your turn on placing and drawing cards. I mean, if you know of any, then by all means, shove it in the comments. But off the top of my head, nothing comes to mind. It just is a really good, quirky, fun game. And we've played it over and over again in sequence, and, you know, no pun intended, and enjoyed it every single time because, you know, it's very short as well. It says 10 minutes a player. Honestly, this game is not going to take 40 minutes with four players. It does not. This game is done and dusted when, within about 20 to 30 minutes tops. And I do mean tops. You know, if people don't take so long on their turns, which they shouldn't do, because there's only so much you need to think about, this game should be done and dusted after a teach, after about 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. It's quick. Quick to set up. Um, you know, you've just got to separate, uh, you know, some certain cards based on player count and then mix them all together, have a face up river, select your powers at random, lay out the cards. Not that long, really. You know, you can share it amongst the group, but it's just cool and quirky and I like cool and quirky. I'm giving this 9 out of 10. I'm giving it a seal of distinction because this is what I want from a filler. Yes, it could look better. You know, the artwork is Fine. It's kind of standard and it's not exactly going to get many people to pull it off the shelf. But it's on Board Game Arena, so you can try it on there. It's getting a UK release very soon, so you can buy it relatively cheap. It's just good, simple, fun, quirky, variety with the player powers, easy to teach, easy to play. I mean, what more do you want from a filler? It's a surprise gem for me. You know, I didn't know if this was going to be a big hit. It was the only thing that was new from Ludonaut. Normally, they're known for, you know, some slightly bigger games, but Ludonaut are known for their more quirky designs. Living Forest is pretty interesting in itself. 
uh, Archaeologic is definitely a very unique deduction game for it. Re Precognition, if you've ever played that, that is one of the most unique games I have ever played in recent years. It takes It's a little clunky in places, but it is very unique and quite cool. So this one, again, is something quirky and cool. They're, they're, they're not... They're not a generic brand. Ludonaut are making interesting games. Do they all hit? No, but a lot of them are. And this is another one. Castle Combo was one of the best fillers I've played all year. It's now got some serious competition. Nine out of 10 for Arte. So that's it for me on this episode of The Broken Meeple. If you like what you see, then please thumb it up on YouTube and thumb it up on Board Game Geek when it goes live on the page. Don't forget to check out the rest of the content I've got. Essen has been reviewed in a big long video. And this is probably the first of all the Essen videos that I'm gonna be putting out over the next few months. Speed reviews for the small stuff, larger reviews for the bigger stuff. And there's a lot to get through, but don't worry. There's a lot for you to enjoy. So take care. And remember, regardless of whether you're freezing your butt off with a walrus or an Arctic fox or a lovely little polar bear, it's still only a game. So bye for now.